question is from Freeman Axtell. Are there any benefits to stability training or using tools like a BOSU ball? <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, mm -hmm. but boy, was it overstated for no, a while. No, no, <laughs> but you know what, though? This, is, uh, this reminds me of like what we talked about in the intro today. Like, you know, leave it to fucking the fitness community to mm -hmm. take something where there's some good science to support the benefits of something. And then we just bastardize the shit out of it. And we just, now it's for everybody. And we're doing, we're balancing everything on a, on a Dyna disc or on a BOSU ball or on a foam pad and trying to make workouts. Cause uh, it's harder. Yeah. just more difficult where yes, there is, I think there's incredible benefits and there's definitely an application for specific people. Uh, but that, that's just it. It's like, you know, I, I use tools like this for a client that it makes practical sense, especially like in the, the rehab area. Like mm -hmm. when you're dealing with rehabilitation, uh, using tools to, to stabilize somebody or challenge their stability uh, is a great way for you to help that support all the muscles that are yeah. supporting a joint or an, in, or an area that was injured. That there's a lot of benefits to that. I see it a lot of times as like in a regression. So if I get somebody that is coming in and I notice instability all over the place, like uh, this is an area that we're really going to have to focus on just like strength training. Like this is something that we need to gain that type of awareness and, and get the body to, you know, respond properly in unstable positions. That way now when we're in stable positions, everything is, you know, working in unison and, and we can then build upon that. Yeah, there's a few components that go into your ability um, to balance. Now we're talking about healthy individuals. Okay. So barring any, you know, buddy that has nervous system or disorders or vestibular system disorders, let's just say everybody's healthy here. So this is what we're, so we're comparing healthy people to each other. Balance comes from a diff few different places. Generally speaking, strength is great for balance. So if you're strong, you're, you're probably going to have better balance than somebody who's healthy, but that's also weak. So like when I would train older people, um, just getting them stronger would dramatically improve their balance because now they could mm -hmm. move with better stability and strength. Now, more specifically, balance is a skill, just like any other skill. Uh, so, you know, give you an example. If you practice balancing on a, let's say you're walking across a, you know, a skinny, you know, pole or something, the more you practice it, the better you get at it because your balance, you, you tend to build it as a skill. Now, is there carryover into the rest of your life? Yes, somewhat. Most of it is to the specific skill. Some of it goes to the rest uh, of your life. Now, in the past, it was overstated. In the past, it was like, we're doing this on everything, mm -hmm. uh, which there's no form of training that should be applied to everything. It'd be like, powerlifting's got great benefits. Everybody powerlift all the time. No, same thing with balance. But that being said, incorporating some components of balance, which for the average person could be as simple as doing single leg Exactly. Exercises. There's levels and we have yeah. to, yeah, definitely a good point to start like stable. And then like, now we're going one leg. Now we're going, you know, on something that is like a, a, an air disc, like where it's, you know, something that's a little bit more challenging. It's so that way it is, it is like you're, you're, you're increasing the level of difficulty as part of the training. And then we move on from there. I, I think the most applicable type of balance training is just the one legged type stuff. It's the most applicable to the real world. Right. It's the thing you're going to be doing in the you real experience world. that the most. Yeah, that's yeah. where I would say the most uh, application I agree with Well, that. I mean, here's an example. This is literally a conversation that I was, was having this last week with a, a client friend of mine. So she's an old client. She's also a really good friend of ours. And uh, I hadn't seen her in probably six months. She stopped by. She lives in LA area. And she came up to visit Katrina and I. And she wanted me to kind of like assess her. She just went and saw uh, uh, her orthopedic friend that checked her out. And she said she first saw a doctor and this doctor uh, prescribed her insoles for a shoe. And I said, what? I said, absolutely not. I said, let me, you know, let, I'll see you when you come down. Like, I don't want you doing that. Let me look at you. And I had told her before that uh, this could be a uh, an issue with her. And what it is, is she has uh, peroneal tendonitis. And a lot of that is because she has, uh, she excessively pronates on one side. So her foot's flat. Right. So her foot flattens out on one side or pronates, right? So it flattens in inward uh, or collapses inward. This is uh, really common. I see this a lot in people squatting. This was an issue for myself. And so this was also a close to home thing as I'm, I'm helping her out with it. And so what I told her we needed to do is we needed to do soft tissue work to uh, alleviate some of that. Okay. So here's where you have application for tools like foam rolling or lacrosse balls to do the soft tissue work on hers to alleviate some of the pain that she's having. And then we need to strengthen your ankle and your feet. 
And so exercises to do that. Now, I, she loves when I recently got her into deadlifting and squatting like heavy in the last year, and she's seen incredible progression and changed her body. And her, she loves being strong. She was like one of those girls that was all circuit type training. I showed her strength training; it changed her life. She's now here's the, the 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 drawback was well, she started deadlifting and squatting really really heavy while also having these flat feet. This caused the peroneal tendonitis, and now I'm having to reverse her back out of that and say, listen, back off of the intensity. I don't want you doing any you know, deadlifting with both feet on the ground anymore. So now we do soft tissue work. We, we work on your, your feet, strengthen that. We do some an, uh, ankle strengthening exercises. And then what I want you doing is deadlifting on one leg. And when you deadlift on, on one leg, I want you to focus more on the stability and the control of that more so than you trying to get more weight up. And so here's an example of how stability training is incredible and a, a tool that uh, you, I, as a trainer, you probably use all the time. Uh, what ended up happening though is the, the science, the support, the benefits of why a trainer like myself would prescribe something in that situation, just like the example I just gave with the foam rolling. We take that and now it's for everybody and everybody should do it and do it all the time. And then we start doing it on, on you know, oh, wow, well, if you can do it just on one leg, try doing it on a foam pad. Now try doing it on a BOSA ball. Now try and hop and then balance and do it. And then, yeah. and so, so we just, we take something really good that has uh, a, a application. Uh, yeah, because it looks cool and it's hard. Right. You know? Right. Yeah. 